I want to say that I'm not a fan of alcoholic beverages being consumed by anyone, but especially followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that a Christian is wise to stay away from all beverage alcohol. And uh, drinking alcohol is not so much a matter of religious or Christian liberty, it's a matter of wisdom. And uh, all of us, I think, would agree that the Bible prohibits drunkenness. But I also believe that our wisest choice in our day is to totally refrain from the consumption of alcoholic beverages. And uh, let me just take a moment, and I want you to write these down. This is not in your notes. This is all free, not in your notes. I want to give you six reasons. Write these down if you would, and at least you'll know where I stand on it. And I don't want to, you know, I just want to talk to you about it for a second, and then we'll get back to the sermon. And uh, six reasons why Don and I do not drink alcoholic beverages. Number one, it doesn't take much alcohol to become intoxicated. For many people, just a small amount of consumed alcohol impairs their senses. Uh, that's why trying to define what getting drunk is, is really difficult because a lot of people, after just a little bit of alcohol, they are intoxicated. And, you know, studies show that uh, just a small amount can really skew a person's capability to be able to respond mentally and even physically. It just dramatically impairs you, just a little of alcohol does. And that's why you don't have to have much alcohol in your blood to get arrested if you're pulled over and they test you. So it doesn't take much alcohol for someone to become intoxicated, so Don and I do not drink alcoholic beverages. And then another reason we don't do it is we have plenty of other choices, plenty of other choices nowadays. Some justify their drinking saying, well, Jesus and the disciples drank wine, and Jesus even turned water into wine. Those are New Testament facts. And I don't try to deny any of that. But on the other hand, there's another fact. The choices for drink in the first century were very limited. And sometimes you had the choice between rancid water and wine. And uh, I believe that's one of the reasons that Jesus and his disciples drank wine. We also know that they drank water. If you read John 4, when Jesus went to the uh, well, he didn't say, give me some wine. He said, give me some water. And uh, the lady gave him some water, and he gave her living water, by the way. And when it comes to quenching our thirst now in the 21st century, we have plenty of other viable, less dangerous choices besides alcohol. So we have plenty of other choices. The third reason Don and I do not drink uh, alcoholic beverages is because alcoholic beverages are no longer necessary for medicinal purposes. In the first century, many times they would use alcoholic beverages for medicinal purposes, they did not have the medications like we do. For instance, we read in Proverbs 31, verse 6, give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to him whose life is bitter. This is a person who is depressed. And yet some Christians will, I believe, foolishly use that verse to try to justify their consumption of alcoholic beverages. Well, you know, why in the world would you drink alcohol in our day when you're depressed? Uh, and bitter in life. I mean, that's what the verse says. With all the antidepressant medications uh, that are available, there's no need for the consumption of alcohol for that type of thing. No, I mean, nobody, it would be cruel to go up to a depressed person and say, I'll tell you what, what you need to do is just drink, get, just get absolutely drunk. Just drink and you'll forget your depression. Nobody would do that nowadays. And yet that's what the verse was alluding to there in Proverbs. And another verse that is unwisely uh, used to justify drinking alcoholic beverages in our day is 1 Timothy 5.23 where Timothy said, or Paul said to Timothy, no longer, Timothy, drink water exclusively, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. Again, why would anybody use wine like that nowadays when there are so many available medications that will give you with precision the exact reaction that you need. Nobody, I don't think, would be able to say that today. They'd take medicine instead. And then some people say, well, you know, the, uh, the, the, the proverb, the, the, the parable that Jesus told in Luke 10, where the good Samaritan used the wine and the oil to treat the wounds of the man who had fallen among thieves. Ah, there's a reason to drink wine because he used that for medicinal purposes. Now, you know, that's getting pretty far-fetched if you ask me. I mean, if you're a little 
child or your grandchild skins his knee. I don't think anybody will say, well, hold there, Junior. Let me get the whiskey and pour it on your knee. I just don't think that's going to happen, okay? And just so, you know, again, it was used for medicinal purposes in the first century, no longer the case now with the plethora and the abundance of medications that are available to us. It's really out of date to even consider that, irrelevant, and I think absurd. Uh, fourthly, alcoholic beverages are addictive. This is not me speaking. These are tests that show that it's addictive. And uh, drinking is like smoking. Once you start, it's really hard to stop. You might say, I can stop whenever I want to. Then do it. Right now, just stop. See if it's not hard. It's hard because your body has become chemically dependent upon it. And I just encourage you to try stopping. If you say you can do it, you say, well, I don't want to. Why don't you want to? Well, I just don't want to. Well, it's because you're addicted. Possibly. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 12, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. I will not be addicted, in other words. So I don't drink, and Donna doesn't drink, because we don't want to be addicted to alcoholic beverages. Fifthly, I don't want, I don't drink, and Donna doesn't drink, because we don't want to set a bad example to other people. You know, what I do in moderation, and there's a relative term, a uh, really relative term. What does it mean? It, it, moderation for one might be excess to another. What I do in moderation, my children or someone else might do in excess. What if your child or your grandchild saw you drinking alcoholic beverages, they knew that you drank, and uh, they did it and, became, and your grandchild became an alcoholic? Wouldn't you at least be partly to blame for them becoming that? Of course you would. Of course you would. And what if they got into your stash at home and they went out and they were driving drunk and don't tell me, look, don't tell me this doesn't happen. I have done funerals for children that were killed by drunk drivers. Don't tell me this. I've had to deal with the aftermath of drunk drivers, all right? Don't tell me it doesn't happen. I was taken out of my theological German class and I had to go to the emergency room for a two-year-old little twin boy that had been thrown out of the back windshield because a drunk driver ran over his daddy's car. Don't tell me. And then he died later that night. And I had to do the funeral. Don't tell me. It doesn't happen. Now, if you had the stash and they took it from you and they went out and either killed somebody or killed somebody, wouldn't that person who died, wouldn't their blood be partially on your hand? Of course it would. Of course it would. You say, well, that'll never happen. How do you know? How do you know? And you say, now, preacher, now, wait a minute. And I can hear you out there thinking. You're thinking loudly. Now, the Bible also says that we need to be moderate in our eating. You're exactly right. And frankly, you know, I've, I don't know that I've always been the best example in that area. And uh, I've been taking steroids a long time, but I, and it makes you hungry and it makes you keep weight on. But I will tell you, I've already lost 13 pounds since January the 1st, planning on losing 25, 30 more. Amen. And uh, hey, why don't you join me? I heard one preacher say, there's a big crowd here today and there's a lot of us too. Some of you didn't bit more know what I meant. You just went like this. He says, time to laugh, Martha. I don't know what they're laughing at, but let's laugh. Mark will explain it to you later. By the way, doesn't he look good? Man, he's, he's lost weight too. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So uh, I, I'm going to be a better example in that, but I want to say this to you. I don't believe overeating or over drinking. I don't believe drinking at all alcoholic beverages. I don't think it glorifies God. And so I don't want to set a bad example to other people. I don't want somebody drinking because I drank. And I'll tell you this, having said all that, I would still, on a rainy, cold night, if I'm on a two-lane country road, I'd rather have a fat driver coming at me than a drunk driver any day of the week. <laughs> Can I have an amen in the house of God? Amen. I'm just telling you, I'll take fat Bubba rather than drunk Bubba any day of the week. Amen. <laughs> And then, <laughs> I, I thought it was time for some humor, all right. It was a little tense in here. 
the last reason Don and I don't drink is it hinders your witness for Christ. In our culture, I believe you can be a more effective soul winner, which I talked about last week, if you don't drink than if you do. And let's take a little poll. How many of you would be personally offended if you went to a restaurant and you saw me and Donna sitting at a bar drinking beer, wine, or liquor? Raise your hand and raise it high. All right. The reason there's, all hands may not be up. I understand that. Some of you, it may not bother you at all. But there are enough hands that went up, that's exactly why I'm not going to do it. Now, there's no double standard for preachers and Christians and believers. So there are enough people that would be offended, so I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. And uh, it's not worth tarnishing your witness. And the Bible says that uh, all things are lawful, not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, not all things edify. When it comes to drinking alcohol, I don't believe they edify. I don't believe they're profitable. It's profitable and it can master you. So I just stay away from 